Hello everyone. In continuation to the previous video in which uh, I spoke about uh, the secondary storage, this video we will be speaking about other types of secondary storage. We also saw something about virtual memory. We have learned about many memory types, the main memory, the processor memory, then the cache memory. And in main memory, we have seen about RAM, ROM, and all. But uh, with respect to every electronic equipment, the secondary storage plays a very important role because it can store a mass data. The main memory or any other memory would be used for some special purpose or some operation. But secondary storage would help us in storing more amount of data, just like our hard disk or our CD drive, and many different. We will try to learn something about this secondary storage in this video now. So what do you mean by a secondary storage? First of all, secondary storage devices have come only because of the reason that the semiconductor memories cannot give you the storage capacity that is required by the user. So we come up with the secondary memory for larger data save storage. So some of the types of uh, uh, secondary storage are magnetic disk, optical disk, and magnetic tape. Magnetic disks are those the disks that we are we use it for a hard disk, disk type hard disk, uh, external or internal hard disk, maybe for your computer or a laptop, many different things. And other than that, we do have uh, your SD card or memory card, if you call. So all those things are secondary storage device. An optical disk are your CD or DVD, Blu-ray disc, so there are types of it. And then comes the magnetic tapes, those are the tapes that are uh, used for audio cassettes, video cassettes, very early we used to use them, nowadays we don't have those things. With. So a magnetic disc, we will discuss about all three of those, specifically about magnetic disc actually, optical disc, We'll have a small discussion. Now, in magnetic strips, we don't speak much about it. Sir. So, uh, there are two reasons. One is that it is completely outdated, and the other is that uh, uh, with respect to the content that I'm supposed to deliver, um, I don't have to speak much about it. So, I'm just trying to avoid it, trying to keep my presentation as precise as possible. So speaking about the magnetic disk. So you here you can see the diagram in which we have got three different parts. So this is the actual uh, look how a magnetic disk looks. Uh, this cannot be seen uh, externally, but uh, internally it has got multiple disk layers, and uh, the, these disk layers are controlled by a rotor. This is the rotor we have, and these rotor will control the disk, and we have a writing and reading head. This internally is written here. This is your reading and writing head. And uh, this will be helping us in writing the data or reading the data from the disk. We will be having a small air gap which will actually make sure that the disk will not be touched, touching the read or write head. Then how the reading or writing happens? It happens like this. So for that change, we have got the value 0. So we will be having an incrementing uh, clock for one we will be having a decrementing clock the same thing you can see here this is how the data or the phase encoded data that will be put into the hard disk or your magnetic disk let us see how it actually works so here is that each of the disks are connected in parallel uh, we don't say that there is only specific number of disks it matters with respect to the capacity then every disk has been has got some number of tracks so these circular shapes whatever we have are tracks so internally we have a track similarly i have one more parallel to it maybe one more here one more here like that we will be having track each of those tracks are divided into sectors you can observe sectors here i have written a sector so those are the sectors this cylinder specifies which is the track within which we are having the sector step. So, cylinder specifies that. So, these informations will tell this ARM assembly where to write or where to read the data. 
okay so rotation will be happening in clockwise remember this is the operation how it is happening i think you all have seen the video or you can find it in youtube how a hard disk or a magnetic disk works if you find there we will be having a disk with a, a, a spindle here so a needle kind of structure which will just running from outer shell to the inner shell of the disk and will be writing the data so this is how the actually the magnetic disk works you can find many videos there so if you look at the disk from the top here you will find like this we have got blue lines to be the tracks and we have got black sections which we call it as sector so we have got like sector 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 for this we will be having more sectors also other than that these sectors will hold some data in a specific value so we have uh, each surface divided into number of tracks and so we each track is divided into sectors so you see what all the other things we need to see each sector contains 12 bytes of data Okay, each sector we are speaking about. Then we will also use ECC for error correction and error detection. Uh, that is what we saw that there was a, a phase model, phase encryption to specify there. Then it is disk controller, which actually keeps all the uh, detailed information, what is actually happening, and all that. We we'll also remember the defects. Or how where the defect was found previously and all that. So we have got two different types of uh, magnetic disk. One is called primary and the other one is secondary magnetic. Uh, here we need to observe one thing. Each of the track will have exactly equal number of sectors. So whenever you store some data, the inner track will hold the data tightly when compared to the outer one. So it is. Inner will be high tightly packed for it has got very limited amount of space to keep the data. Access time. What is the access time for the data to read? Uh, it has got two things. One is the seek time. The other one is latency. Seek time means the time required for the read or write head to move to the proper track. Then the latency. Latency is for the disk to rotate properly so that the sector which is required for the read or write to work on it. So that is latency. So total disk access time will be seek time plus latency. So we need both the times, right? So we have got the overall time to be seek plus latency. Then data buffer. Uh, we should always know this. Whenever we have this buffer here, or like I say, like the uh, disk access time, the processor would not be willing to wait for a long time. Sometimes processor would be trying to push more amount of data onto the disk. The disk will not be capable enough to write the data at the same speed. So we need a disk buffer or a data buffer, which will be used to keep the data and put it in the queue such a way that we can write it in a required speed. So it uses an SCSI circuit, so which is which actually writes the data at a very high speed. So this data buffer helps uh, to synchronize the speed of the data that is transferred and with respect to the data that is to be written onto the disk. Uh, a disk controller. So this magnetic disk controller, not just the magnetic disk, any disk controller, we have got a controller just like a DMA controller, right? Direct memory access. So we have learnt about this in a, in a very early video. So this DMA, uh, this controller uses the exact scheme of DMA for the data transfer, and it will also keep the information, pass on the information like memory address. Disk address and then the word count, how much amount of data to be transferred. So that information will be there. It will share those information before giving any transfer, maybe from the disk to the processor, or to the bus, or from the bus to the disk. Both. The disk control has got some functionalities. So four of the important functionalities are see, read, write, and read. So read and write. It's its responsibility. If the data is to be put onto the disk, it will write. It, if the data is to be fetched from the disk, then it will read. But seek, seek is to move the head very properly to the current position, to the desired track, to whichever the track has to work. So putting it there is seek. Very important operation. Should control it, right? Should show the number of track, which track, which sector, which disk, so 
all those things must be properly known. Then read initiating the read operation. Data is usually read in serial manner. Once the serial data that is read is combined to made a, make a word, the word will be then transferred onto the data buffer. Writing. Data is transferred down directly onto the disk. So it is again a serial writing. Then we also have got as specified early, it is an error checking code we have. And this error checking code will help us in identifying the error and then to correct it. Next we will speak about optical disk. So this optical disk you have seen. Most of the people use it for uh, storing some software. It is actually quite secure. We have got a lot of advantages with respect to this optical disk. So they are the most commonly used secondary memory devices. They are quite easy and more secure and handy to use. And they are quite simple in terms of their design. Let's see about its operation. So this is how the disk is made up of. We have got like three layers. Aluminium layer and uh, acrylic we have. Over the label if it is, we'll paste it. And then we have got a polycarbonate plastic of which we have written the, we will have those layers, aluminium and acrylic combination. This aluminium and acrylic combination will help the disk to remember the connectivity, how it is to be done. Okay. So, aluminium will give the, the electron connection. Acrylic will try to behave like a insulator. So, whenever we have a data written, data will be written in terms of a fit, means maybe 0 or 1, it is decided, and then the other one is land. So, when we write that uh, to read, when we are reading it, so we can observe this here. If the source and the data are getting complete reflection, then it is a fit. And um, if there is a change, this change will tell us that there is a transformation between fit and land. Again, land will give the exact reflection. So, this is how it is actually working. This is your optical disk working. So, if you observe the same small animation has been written for all the disks. Uh, this is the fit we have and this is the land we have here. So, this is how it is actually working. Here yeah, you can observe that, right? This is your land, this is your fit. So, there are many different types of uh, optical disks, CD-ROM, record, CD recorder, recordable. Uh, then we have got a CD readable CDs we saw, then we saw DVD, then readable DVD and all that. The last thing that we will be speaking for this now is your magnetic tape, or strip we say. So, this magnetic strip will be used to store very limited amount of data. It cannot store a huge amount of data actually. Maybe when it was um, given out or invented, it was actually holding quite a big large amount of data when compared to any other system, which it was very hard for us to store store data. If you all remember, we all have paid thousands of rupees to purchase one GB memory card. So, that same rate we will get one TB or more than that. So, it's a very big growth that we find it in terms of memory storage and all that. So, this magnetic strip has got to the strip is divided into a section where we'll be having a section of file gap, then we'll put the recorded data and then there is a gap for the other record and then we have another record. So, this record gap will help us in uh, uh, holding two different records and uh, records will be of continuous. They will be having continuous data that is put in. Then this file mark will initiate the start and the end of the file. Okay. So, the size of this magnetic strip will hold somewhere around 7 to 9 bits of data. So, this is the thing, these are the things about uh, secondary uh, memory. So, I hope you have learned something. Learning is understanding, the way of understanding something. This is one of the definitions that I have written for learning. For more definitions, you can follow my page, maybe in Instagram as UPK345. Or you can also find it um, in Facebook as uh, UPK. Thank you so much for watching the video. Hope you have understood something. If you have got some queries, do put it in the comments. Thank you.